Shalom. November 12th. 2023 5784 God's gonna bless us like never before with open doors even in the midst of famine and plague and world war amen hallelujah stand back from this community that I may annihilate them in an instant that's what God told Moses he says, stand back from this community that I may annihilate them in an instant. And Moses said, by this you shall know that it was God who sent me to do all these things, that they are not of my own devising. God told Moses, he said, stand back from this community that I may annihilate them in an instant. God's annihilating communities in an instant. And Moses said, By this you shall know that it was God who sent me to do all these things, and that they are not of my own devising. If these people's death is that of all humankind, it is their lot. It is humankind's common fate. It is not God. It was not God who sent me. But... But if God brings about something unheard of so that the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up in a great earthquake with all that belongs to them and they go down alive into the pits of hell, you shall know that those involved have spurned God. God's going to swallow up the people that spurned him and rejected him. And it says, I'm reading from the Safaria. It says, if God brings about something unheard of that's never been done before, so that the ground opens its mouth in a great earthquake and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the pits of hell and show, you shall know that those involved have spurned and rejected God. Now, the first thing that stands out is hell is in the middle of the earth. You know, in the middle of the earth is where all the hot magma and lava is at. And it says right here in the Word of God that the, that the ground, the earth will open its mouth and swallow them up in an earthquake. And they will go down alive into hell so that means if the earthquake swallowed them up and they went down alive into hell hell is in the earth in the center of the earth and if you go on like google or youtube and uh you can find videos of where they drilled they drilled down to the center of the earth and it had a camera on the tip of it so you could see it and it had a you know um, cam so you could hear the noise and when they drilled down to the center of the earth they were shocked that they could hear screaming they could hear people screaming in the center of the earth there's a, there's a camera there's a video of that online if you want to search for it and God says that show or hell is in the center of the earth and he even made the earth open up and swallow them and sent them straight to hell alive to be tormented forever in hell mm, that's scary and as soon as he had finished speaking all these words the ground under them burst open as soon as God spoke that word it came to pass because he was mad because they came against God's servant Moses. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and everything, all Korah's people and all their possessions. And they went down alive into hell, into the earth. Hell is in the earth, the center of the earth. With all that belonged to them, the earth closed over them and they vanished from the midst of the congregation there's a separation coming 
Don't be shocked when God separates you. Because he's separating the wheat from the tares. And the earth closed over them and they vanished from amidst the congregation. This is talking about church people too. It's not talking about the world. It's talking about God sent church people to hell. They were vanished from the congregation and the church and went straight to hell alive. And all Israel around them fled. <laughs> When Israel saw that, they took off running. When they heard the shrieks and the cries of those people as they were cast alive into the pits of hell and the earth swallowed them up. And a fire went forth from God and consumed the 250 contestants offering the incense. But if God brings about something unheard of, so that the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them and they go down alive into the pits of hell you shall know that it was God that sent me Korah gathered the whole community against Moses at the entrance of the tent of meeting then the presence of God appeared to the whole community and God spoke to Moses and Aaron saying stand back from this community that I may annihilate them in an instant but they fell on their faces and said, O oh God, source of the breath of all flesh, when one member sins, will you be wrathful with the whole community? See, even though they were persecuting Moses, he was still pleading with God to spare their lives. He was interceding for his enemies. Whew. Speak to the community and say, Withdraw from about the abodes of Korah and Dathan and Abram. And Moses rose and went to Dathan and Abram, the elders of Israel, following him. And he addressed the community, saying, Move away from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing that belongs to them, lest you be wiped out for all their sins. So they withdrew from about the abodes of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. Now Dathan and Abram had come out, and they stood at the entrance of their tents with their wives, their adult children, and their little ones. And Moses said, by this you shall know that it was God who sent me to do all these things, that they are not of my own devising. If these people's death is that of all humankind, if their lot is humankind's fate, it was not God who sent me. But if God brings about something unheard of, so that the ground opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the pits of hell, you shall know that those involved had spurned God. You will know the ones that go to hell are the ones who rejected God. Scarcely had he finished speaking all these words when the ground opened up under them and it burst open. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their households and all Korah's people and all their possessions went down into the pits of hell, alive, to be tormented forever. And they went down alive into Sheol with all that belonged to them. And the earth closed its mouth over them, and they vanished from the midst of the congregation. Mm. The judgment begins in the house of the Lord. There's going to be a separation Amen, somebody. Don't be shocked when God separates you. All Israel around them fled when they saw this and heard the shrieks and the cries of those cast into hell. And they said, The earth might swallow us up too. And a fire went forth from God and consumed the 250 contestants offering the incense. When God said, Stand back from this community that I may annihilate them in an instant, says the Lord. Hmm. That was a suddenly. The Lord desires his servant's vindication that he may magnify and glorify his teachings. But many are the torments of the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord is surrounded with favor like Moses.
For surely my sovereign will give you a sign. Look at the woman who is with child and about to give birth to a son. Let her name him Emmanuel or Yeshua Jesus. For the mountains may move and the hills be shaken, but my loyalty shall never move from you. Though the mountains may move, may the or the hills be shaken, or even if there's an earthquake that swallows up half the church, my loyalty shall never move from you, nor my covenant of friendship, which I swore unto you. <clears throat> my covenant of friendship will not be shaken, says God, who takes you back in love. Unhappy storm-tossed one, uncomforted, I will lay carbuncles as your building stones and make your foundations of sapphires, blue sapphires. And I will make your battlements of rubies and your gates of precious stones and opals. The whole encircling wall of gems. Who can believe what we have heard? Upon whom has the arm of God been revealed? For he has grown by God's favor like a tree crowned like a tree trunk out of arid ground. He had no form of beauty that we should look at him, no charm that we should find him pleasing. This is talking about Jesus. He was despised and shunned by men, a man of suffering, familiar with disease. As one who hid his face from us, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Yet he was our sickness that he was bearing, our suffering that he endured, we accounted him plagued, smitten, and afflicted by God, but he was wounded because of our sins, crushed because of our iniquities. He bore the chastisement that made us whole, and by his bruises and by his stripes we are healed. We all went astray like sheep, each one of us going our own way, and God visited upon him the guilt of all sins, the, the sins of all of us. He was mistreated yet he was submissive. He did not open his mouth, but like a sheep being led to the slaughter, like a ooh, dumb before those who shear her, he did not open his mouth. It reminds me of David when David said, make my mouth like a bridle, as I will not open my mouth against my enemies. By oppressive judgment, he was taken away. God gets the vengeance. If somebody talks down on you, you don't have to say anything back to them. Just say, God, you get the vengeance. By oppressive judgment, he was taken away. Who could describe his abode? For he was cut off from the land of the living. Through the sin of my people, who deserved his punishment. And his grave was set among the wicked, and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no injustice, and he had spoken no falsehood. But God chose to crush Jesus by disease, that if he made himself an offering for guilt, he might see offspring and have long life, and that through God's purpose might prosper. Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Out of his anguish, he shall see it. He shall enjoy it to the full through his devotion. My righteous servant Jesus makes the many righteous. It is their punishment that he bears. Surely I will give him the many as his portion, and he shall receive the multitude of his spoil. For he exposed himself to death and was num numbered among the sinners, whereas he bore the guilt of the many and made intercession for sinners. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Hallelujah.